Another day, another stereotypical JRPG for the DS. Although, I'm not so sure whether Dragon Quest fans wanted this. Dragon Quest VIII was released on the PlayStation 2, and you'd expect Dragon Quest IX to be released on the PlayStation 3. Well, Level 5 has been a little strategic here. I mean, why not release your game on the gaming platform that most people have? Although, in doing this, you are going up against a lot of competition, as RPGs are probably the DS's strongest genre. So, is there anything special here? You play as your own custom created character, and at the start of the game, you're a guardian angel whose duty it is to protect and watch over the town of Angel Falls. You go about doing good deeds for the townspeople, and in doing so, you obtain benevolence. Your angelic clan is in need of this magical substance to feed a tree called. Um. Yggdrasil. And in time, this tree will supposedly ascend you and your fellow angels to the heavens. Unfortunately, the tree goes apeshit, and you're stripped of your wings and halo, and tasked with finding the answer of what happened and finding a way back home. I feel that the designers have done a good job with the script, considering the limitations. By limitations, I mean that you and your party are all custom created, and as such have no personalities. You are all essentially robots. As such, there's no character development for your own party. There are a lot of interesting characters to meet along the way, however, and your favourite companion, Stella, is a charming character too, despite her constant use of the word flapping. The script is exceptionally well written, so much so that the game doesn't need voice acting, although I can't pretend I didn't want it. If you've played a Dragon Quest game before, then this one's going to feel all too familiar. The game is about as stereotypical as you can get in an RPG, but annoying features like random encounters isn't a problem, thanks to enemies now being visible on the field. The battles are straight up turn-based affairs, and your four-man party is entirely customizable. You've got several classes available to you, and I found myself easily lost in decking out my party in all the latest gear and grinding the hell out of them because I'm that kind of player. For those non-grinders out there, not to worry. Some grinding is involved, but the game has a fairly neutral difficulty level, with boss fights proving to be the real challenge. I can see that Yuji Hori was trying his best to introduce new games to the franchise. For the first time in Dragon Quest history, Dragon Quest IX includes both online content and multiplayer. If you can get online, you can download extra quests, and there's an online shop for rare items too. But the feature that has everyone excited about is the local multiplayer. Up to three other players can join your game by replacing one of your party members with their own character. In addition, you can set the DS to canvas for guests, and then close the system, at which point any other DS owner who is playing Dragon Quest IX near you sends a character into your game. This is used for guest characters, and as a delivery method for rare treasure maps that unlock additional quests. Although, I never got to use this feature as, well, Dragon Quest IX has only been released, and Yorkshire isn't exactly Japan. I suspect very much that this is why if you want the definitive Dragon Quest experience, you have to live in Japan, but if you can get a few friends together to play this, you'll have a hell of an entertaining time. For the DS, this is one phenomenal looking game. It's about as good as a 3D game can get in the DS, and they've done a good job at keeping that Dragon Quest look from Dragon Quest VIII, although I wish they would have gone for a third person viewpoint instead of a top down view. This stops the game from being as visually impressive as Dragon Quest Monsters Joker for example. Visually, the game is completely different than the other two Dragon Quest titles, and I am glad they've gone for a different approach. All those Dragon Quest tunes and sound effects are here, whether you love them or hate them. I haven't played that many Dragon Quest games, but I found them instantly recognisable. The menus have also been improved over Dragon Quest V's rather lazy effort, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. One cool visual feature I was rather fond of is that your equipment changes how your character looks. It's incredible how many RPGs don't do this, although it is a bother when the best armour doesn't look good on you. Well, because I'm just fashion conscious like that. 
Dragon Quest IX is definitely a worthy Dragon Quest game, and it's clear to me why this game sold so well in Japan. It's obvious it will be as successful internationally, as a strong Dragon Quest community will be beneficial to the game's strong social aims. When I was in primary school, Pokemon was the rage, and everyone had a copy of at least one of the games. Dragon Quest IX deserves the same love, and whilst I do think it still stands strong as a single player experience, it's even stronger as a multiplayer. I can't wait for Dragon Quest X to come out for the Wii, I'm sure I'll have a review for that.